and this video is related to chapter three excel workbook and today we're going to cover some basic statistic excel formulas and we're going to use this workbook to do that so i opened up the workbook for chapter three and now i'm going to go to this sheet called test scores all right so basically give you some background an exam was given at a local university and the dean's office says hey I was given a few hundred students, we'll say, four or 500, doesn't matter. But they said, we're gonna take a sample of some of the test scores, all right? So that's the data you see here. We're gonna analyze that data, all right? So let's begin. So again, we're on the worksheet test scores. First thing I'm gonna do, so, so my data here is in column A. First thing we like to do is, and this is something I always like to do, so I'm gonna click on data, yep. I'm gonna be in cell A here. And if your filter's not on, I'll click here. You can turn the filter on and off here with the filter button. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the drop down here. I'm gonna sort it smallest to largest, smallest to larger, largest. So it sort, sorts the scores for us smallest to largest, okay? So, all right, let's answer some of these questions again using some Excel statistic formulas. All right, easy one. How many students are, student scores are in the sample equals count open parentheses, and where's my data? What's the values? How many? 100, so there's 100 scores. What's the average score? So that's the mean, but in Excel we use the formula average. How many? Close parentheses, average is 75.05. What's the median score? The median score is the middle number. That's the middle number of our sample, okay? A little different than the average. So we're gonna median equals again, open parentheses, close parentheses, column A, 76.5. We'll come back to what that means in a few minutes. What was the score that was received the most? Okay, let's be careful with this one. So the formula is, is mode equals mode, that S, N, G, L, we got open parentheses, same column A. Now, be careful because what this formula in Excel does is it says, Okay, how many times did a certain number appear? So let's take a look at some of this. So example, 53 appeared four times. 63 appeared twice. 79 appeared five times. So when it finds the first occurrence of a number that appears the most, that's the number that will go here. Now there could be another value, let's say like 83 or 84 that appears five, six times, whatever, the same number, the same number of times, let's say five times but it's still 79, it's gonna show 79 because that's the first number it finds, okay? All right? So, so it looks through the range of numbers, highest to lowest to highest, the number that occurs the most, which was 79, it puts there. Again, 84, 85 could have been occurred five times, doesn't matter, ignores that, it uses 79, right? Okay? What was the highest score received? Well, that's equals max, again, open parentheses, A, what was the lowest score received? 100, that's good. Lowest score was min, open parentheses, A, again, 51, lowest score. And obviously, you can see it right here, 51, all right? If we scroll down and look at our data, 100 is right here. So the min and the max. What is the first quadrant value? So we'll do equals Q U A R. T I L E dot E X C open parentheses again. Our array is our data is in column A, comma one. We want to go first, so that's 62.25. What was the third one? Equals Q U A R T I L E dot E X C and A, comma three for the third one, 86.75. All right. We're gonna come back to those in a little while, what those mean, all right? How many students received a score greater than 80? But we can obviously go through and count, count the numbers, do a tally and whatnot, but let's make this easy. We're gonna do a count if statement, because that makes it easy, because although we only have 100, 100 uh, scores, we may have 10,000 scores, who knows? So we're gonna equals count if, open parentheses again arranged, hasn't changed, it's count A, comma, what's the criteria? Open um, double quotes, greater than, sign 80, double quotes, close parentheses, 
So count if column A, comma, double quote, greater than 80, double quote, close parentheses. So this formula is telling us, hey, look at this data in column A and count only if the value is greater than 80, okay? 38, so 38 scores were greater than 80, not bad. Ah, the standard deviation, number 10, we're almost done. Standard deviation, what is the standard deviation of the sample? Okay, so we're equals ST. Remember the key here is sample, DEV dot S or sample, okay? Open parentheses, column A. Okay, we gotta use dot S, close parentheses, because this is sample, 13.9410. That's our standard deviation. So now we want to talk about the Z score. The Z score tells us for each of these scores how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. <clears throat> so how do we figure out a Z score? All right, and this is going to come back in chapter six, but we're going to just cover the formula right now. Okay, what is the Z score? So I'm going to go over here, column cell B two. So from column B, cell B two equals from the standard. Eyes. And Excel is asking for three values. The X, the number I want to know, the mean, and the standard deviation. So we'll put 51. The mean is this number here, which is E4, cell E4, 75.05. I get hard coding, but let's not do that. Let's, let's use cell E4, then comma, and then um, we're going to do um, the standard deviation, which is right here. And so E12. And so what this tells us is that 51 is negative 1.7513 standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, now what well, we got to figure it out. The question is asking what's the C score for 86? We'll come back to that in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this formula down, but before we do that, we got to make a modification to the formula. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the 4. A dollar sign in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the 12. What the dollar sign means is a box that cell. So then if I copy this down 5 times, 10 times, 5,000 times, so I'm going to box those two values, okay? So I'm going to simply, if you look, I can copy this down. I can do control C, control V, or copy paste. But I'm going to click here on this little dot here, this little green dot here in the right lower corner. Copies it down for us, okay? So let's take a look. 86 is right about here. Ah, so it's 0.7854. So it's 0.7854 standard deviations away from the mean, okay? So now, final question. Would it be fair to give every student that received a score with one standard deviation away from the mean a B? Okay, so let's talk about that. So what's our mean? Our mean is 75.05. Well, right about here, right? And 75.05. So our mean's right about here, right? So one standard deviation away from the mean. Let's do that. So we're gonna say, okay, within one standard deviation, we're about right about here at 88. So from here to here, is one standard deviation away from the mean. So from a score of 76 to 88, is one standard deviation away from the mean, okay? Within one standard deviation away from the mean, all right? So far so good, all right? Now, but again, let's not answer yes or no just yet, all right? Let's look at this question again. The question is, would it be fair to give every student that received the score within one standard deviation away from the mean a B? So that's a positive. This is a positive plus one standard deviation. So within one standard deviation away from the mean. But let's go back and look at the negative. These are the negative values. So this is also one standard deviation away from the mean, right about to here, about a 62. I'll highlight that. So now let's analyze this data again. So from a score of 62 to a score of 88, that's one standard deviation away from the mean, okay? Remember, I mean 75.05. This is determined by our, our, um, our, our um, <clears throat> standard deviation number here, 13.94. So would it be fair to get someone out of 62 a B? 
if you fail to get someone to get an E8 and a B? I would probably guess no on this one. I would say no. If someone that got a 62 versus someone that got an 80, we both get the same grade. Okay. So the next part of the video will cover more advanced formulas with this data. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.